Hello, everybody. Hi. Thanks for showing up to watch me take on Tim, Desert Storm Bradley. <laughs> we would have got way, that we would have got way more people in here if I agreed to let him punch me. I have not agreed to let him punch me. I'd like to remind the room that I am an attorney, and I have not agreed to let him punch me. I wouldn't punch him. Only because I'm an attorney. Well, I'm smarter than that. No, I mean, if you wasn't one. <laughs> well, thank you. I feel much safer now. Um, I, I want to take a moment and uh, really recognize uh, Leadership Coachella Valley for uh, deciding to do this. I mean, frankly, uh, when this idea was first kicked around, it was just a very small idea. But if you put anything like that in front of Scott, Peggy Sue, my good friend Matt, Tracy, I mean, we just can't kick around an idea. We have to make it happen. And so lo and behold, we decided we would talk to Sean. Sean gave us the room, as you heard, 60 people. Can we fill it with 60 people? Yeah. Of course we can just fill it about. with 60 people. We got people on the waiting list that doesn't exist because there's no other roads, there's no other space, right? So thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to doing this, not only this first time, but in times in the future as well. And with that, I really am proud and excited to introduce a guy that I like to call my friend, thank the five-time world champion boxer, a local product, a guy right here from our valley, right? Right here, born and raised. Feel free to jump in if I say anything wrong. No, I'm, I'm right. on you, I'm on you. But yeah, no punching though. Oscar, please stop it. Five-time world champion. Like that in and of itself is incredible to me, right? Absolutely. Thank you. I'm gonna pick this up because I wanna make sure I give the right, right titles. Two-time WBC light welterweight champion, the WBO light welterweight champion, and a two-time WBO welterweight champion. Ring Magazine referred to Tim Bradley, this guy right here to my left, pound for pound, one of the top three boxers in the world. Yeah. In the world. Wow, yeah, at one point. <laughs> Take it easy, all right? Let us, hey, let us shine I, I some know. light on you, all right? Oh, you know how I go. Come on, let us go. I'm all right? always critic. Hey, no, this, this is all true, is it not? Yeah. It is all true. This is true stuff. Oh, by the way, feel free to eat. By all means, <laughs> feel free to eat. We're going to be talking here for a little while. I think most of us, either boxing fans, like people who actively enjoy boxing and love boxing, even to the, the people who are not necessarily a big time boxing fan, know that this gentleman, a local product, fought Manny Pacquiao three times. Yeah. A trilogy of fights with Manny Pacquiao, yeah. each one bigger and greater than the one before it. First professional fight, August 20th, 2004. Yes. 20, what, nine days away from your 21st birthday. Yes, it was. Retired. No. I mean, from boxing. Well, from boxing. August 6, 2017, by way of Instagram. <laughs> Pretty much. So with that as sort of a background, it's my honor, it really is my honor, to finally get a chance to talk to Tim Desert Storm Bradley in front of other people. Well, thank you for having me. First of all, um, if I can speak, I just want to give all praise to God for allowing me to be here today. Uh, to speak to everyone here and hopefully my story would impact their life in some, some way or shape or form. Um, I, as Amir was saying, I am homegrown. Uh, I'm not a guy, outside guy coming in. I am speaking to you from my experience and what I've done uh, to get to where I'm at today. And it's been a long journey. It's been a fun journey. It's been a hard, it's been blood, sweat and tears all the way through. And I'm here to share some of my experiences with you all. So, uh, Amir, you got any questions for me? Absolutely. So let's start by jumping into the historical rocket ship. Let's go back before you were a boxer. Boxer, Tell me about Tim Bradley, let's say... A kid? The eight-year-old Tim Bradley. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, the eight-year-old the eight, eight Tim Bradley um, was a little bit of a, a hothead. I grew up in Palm Springs. It wasn't a... You know, Palm Springs, years, Palm Springs, everybody say, oh, it's a beautiful area. Yeah, it is, but there's a bad area to every city, and I lived in that area, and that was North Palm Springs, and they called it Gateway Area. Um, it's changed now, but back then it was, um, it was a particular gang that I lived near. It was called GWBC. Uh, most of my family members were in the gang. Uh, my uncles uh, were selling drugs on the corner. Um, my father and my mother were deep in my life, but 
When I left home, it was when things always seemed to change. Uh, you know, you can definitely become a product of your environment, depending on where you live at. That's the reason why I choose environments for my kids that I like and I want from them uh, because of the environment that I grew up in. Um, I was a little bit of a, I was a short, well, I'm still short, <laughs> but <laughs> I was a small guy, had a big heart, big heart, and uh, I was driven. I was self-motivated um, from, I don't know, I think I was five years old when I first saw a motorcycle. I wanted it. My dad told me that I had to do 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups every single day until I was six years old to have a motorcycle for Christmas. And I did that every single day. So I can tell you right there the determination that I had and the will that I had right away. And I, I think I was born with that. You know, in the beginning. Did, did you get the motorcycle? At I did get the motorcycle. I actually got two. So I got two motorcycles. One was a 50 Zinger. It was red. It was beautiful. It was hot. Oh, so <laughs> I still remember it like yesterday. And then I also had a, got an 80 because he knew that I was strong enough. I was going to outgrow that 50 and I was going to get bored with that. So he gave me an 82 to go with that. Okay, so were we doing push ups and sit ups because we. Thought we might be a boxer one day, or? No, I was doing push-ups and sit-ups because I needed to get my physique stronger to be able to handle the, the speed of that, that motorcycle. Okay. And my dad was always training, um, physically training, and he, was, he wanted to be a bodybuilder, but once he found out he had to take drugs, he decided not to go that route. But as I was saying, um, when I was young, I was, I was driven. I was, I was a little bit on the bully side because I was always shorter. People always pick on me and all the time. And, the way I was raised was was to never allow a guy to disrespect you, and being around that environment with a lot of kids were, you know, a lot of kids were very disrespectful, and uh, they would look to take advantage of you, and I didn't allow that to happen. So I kind of became the bully. In second grade, I got expelled out of school for fighting. Uh, I remember I was uh, I had over 100 fights that year in second grade. I fought every day. I was in office. <laughs> who, who, yeah. who was who was your promoter at that? No one. <laughs> I still remember the principal. His name was Mr. Mahoney. And uh, it was he back in the days. Yeah, I don't know if he's still around. You saw him a lot, probably. But I saw him every single day. <laughs> um, I was one of those bad kids. I'm, I don't know if anyone that worked for the school district in here, but I was one of those kids. I was always in the office. Uh, here he comes again. Here he comes again. What do you do now? And uh, so I went on third grade, went to a different school, fourth grade. Got expelled out of that school as well. My father at the time worked for the school district and they gave me a little grace. And I went to one school that was close to my house named uh, Vista Del Monte. And all of my friends that I grew up with went to this school. So it was kind of like, a, I don't know, setting myself up for failure. But um, the end of fifth grade is when I discovered the love for boxing and I discovered boxing. So, um, all right. So, uh, when you're a fifth grader who discovers what they call what the sweet science, right? Sweet science. Well, how do you how do you develop from a fifth grader who likes to watch boxing to a fifth grader who is boxing? Well, at the time when I discovered boxing, my friend was was actually boxing at the time. His name was Julio. I still remember him um, today. I talked to him about a few months ago. Um, he was boxing at the time. We used to always play around slap box. So he said, oh, why don't you come down to the boxing gym and try it out? So I, I begged my dad for about two months and uh, my dad didn't want me to fight. And, you know, it, I was so persistent. You know, that word persistence is, is, is the reason why I'm where I'm at today. But as I was saying, I was so persistent and I, you know, I always get what I want. There's no doubt about it. I got the motorcycle. I've always been that way. I, I have to get what I want. I will, I'm willing to earn it. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And I persuaded my father to take me to the boxing gym. And I thank God that he did because let me tell you, um, when I walked in that gym, it was like, to me, it was like walking into heaven. It was like, I don't know, something came over me. I loved it. Um, I loved everything to do with it. I, I love the fact that I get to fight people and beat up people and don't get in trouble for it. It was so cool. And then I get to win a trophy and eventually someday, you know, they're gonna pay me to watch me fight. And I just thought that was just the craziest thing ever. And I'm like thinking to myself, like, this is the best sport in the world to me because this is down my avenue. 
So, so you mentioned at the beginning though that your dad wasn't no. immediately supportive. No. So at what point did your dad go from being someone against your passion to being someone, because it's my understanding, he became a central figure in yes. the development of your skills. So at what point does he transition from uh, someone who doesn't want you to be a boxer to someone helping you be the best boxer? Well, when he saw that I was a natural, I had natural instincts, um, and he saw that when I sparred my friend the first time, my friend actually beat the crap out of me. And I sat at the edge of the ring, and my dad looked at me and said, I told you this sport is hard. He was like, I told you, son, this sport is hard. You still want to do this? And I said, yeah. And he was just like, OK, well, you know what we got to do then? I said, I want to get better, because I'm not going to go out like this. Like, I'm not, my friend just embarrassed me, and I got to get him back. OK, real quick, I got to jump in. because okay. I'm. I'm uh, my personality uh, tends to be that friend. So th this friend, I think you said his name is Julio. His name is Julio. Does he still talk about that time he beat the five-time world champion? No, he knows he knows better not to because I. <laughs> I said that was one time, buddy. That was one time, and every. <laughs> I mean, he was training for about three months, and I'm just coming in, and there was a conditioning program in the beginning that I had to go for two weeks, but I only did three days of it because I was the strongest kid in the gym. And I was the youngest, one of the youngest ones in the gym, but I was the strongest. I can do more pull-ups and push-ups than anybody. And that due to the background for my father and getting that motorcycle, you know. So, no, I, I wanted to get better. I wanted to, like for me, my, my personality was to always try to be the best. The way my father raised me was, was, you know, always try to be the best you can possibly be. And anything you do, you always put your best foot forward. You know, be the best that you can be, son. So when I got that butt whooping by my friend, it just motivated me to, to train and do what I had to do to get better. So, I mean, I, I lived boxing, I read boxing. I mean, I get up in the morning, I'll be shadow boxing. I would go to school, I'll be shadow boxing. I get in, before I get in the shower, I'm shadow boxing. I mean, I'm so into what I was doing and, and so focused that if you took it away from me, I. I would cry. I would get upset about it. You know. I don't know if anybody have. I'm pretty sure kids. People have kids in here. But do you ever have a? Do you ever have one of your childs or one of your kids? You know, if they you don't allow them to do something that they want to do, they start crying. Well, that would, well, most people it's like candy. They want candy. They want you know. Kids want you know something. Play the video iPad. game. No iPad. No, but mine was boxing. I wanted to go to the gym, and when I couldn't go to the gym, it was like it was it was like the end of the day for me. It was like a nightmare. Um, it was just something that had driven me and, and, and not something that I wanted to do on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, so I mentioned in the intro you were 20, like nine days, I think, from your 21st birthday and your first professional fight. You're 20 years old, almost 21. We fast forward to today. If you could go back and tell the 20-year-old first night fight, Tim Bradley, something, anything, what would you tell him? Be patient. Be patient. Um, I was never, I, I'm never, been, I'm still not patient. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> I'm not patient at all. Like, I gotta tell you, like, if I want something, I won't stop. I won't stop until I get it, man. Everything that I've earned in my life, if I've, I've always been that way. Like, I will do whatever it takes to get what I want. And in a positive way, not in a negative way, in a positive way. And I will work extremely hard to get it. So, um, I would say patience because right out the gate, my first fight, there was a championship fight going on in the main event, and they were around my weight class. And I fought, I knocked my guy out in the second round. I saw the matchup, I saw the fighters, and I looked at my trainer and I said, Hey, can, we, can I fight that guy for that belt? <laughs> to, to, you like know, right next then time? No, oh, no, no okay. like next, the next, my next fight because okay. I can beat him and I want to take his belt. You know, so it, like I never had patience, and and it did, drove me crazy. Did they let you fight that guy? No, they didn't. So you, they didn't. you had to go on and on. Did yeah. You, did you ever fight him? Did you eventually? No, nah, it was a. My trainer told me he said no. He said that's a that's a little belt. That's a junior belt. That's a little bitty belt. That's not the, the world belt. That's the one that you want. So he would always calm me down, um, and but I like I told you, I, I I wanted to fight the best right away. I felt that I could beat the, beat the best best guys even in my first fight. Okay. So I was always full of confidence. So how long did it take from that 20-year-old first fight to becoming the first time you became the champ? Hmm. 20 took three and a half years. When 
the what the way I do things, the way I do things and the way I think is is that I always put a time limit on things. Like I always put goals. I set goals for myself. It can be small goals and be like, okay, I'm gonna run three miles a day. By next week I wanna be running six miles. And I would slowly increase and to get to that six to six miles. Uh, same thing with when my boxing career was like I would I would set a time to where I felt that like I should be world champion. If I'm not world champion by then, then guess what? I'm gonna go be a fireman because you know I need to refocus myself because I guess I'm not good enough to be able to do that. Most champions, it takes about four years to become a world champion. I did it in three and a half. I did it a little bit shorter and shorter time period than what I had projected for myself. So it took me about three and a half years to get to that championship fight in England uh, against Junior Witter. I heard you just say fireman. Are you, were you being serious? Yeah, that was my next, that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to become a fireman. If I didn't uh, make it in boxing, if I didn't become world champion in four years, I was gonna be a fireman. So you gave yourself four years. Four years to become a world champion. Did it in three and a half. Did it in three and a half. And that's the only reason when the fire truck goes screaming down the street, it's not Tim Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have made a great fireman, dude. I ain't gonna lie. Oh yeah, I, I would have made a great fireman. But, um, no. <laughs> well, hold on a second. If, if, I, I can't, I, I'm not done with this fireman thing. If, if you, what, what about your skill set as a boxer and where you, what makes you think you'd be a great fireman? I'm not saying you wouldn't be. I'm just asking, wh where's the, correlate some of that for me? Well, because of my, I, well, I think honestly because of my heart, man. Um, the way I was raised, like I said, I was, well, I haven't said it yet, but I was raised up in the church, man. I was raised up in the church. Um, I was, my mother drug me to Sunday school, from Sunday school to, you know, main service. So it was like I, I picked up those morals along the way, you know, um, learning the word, man. You know, Ten Commandments, I, I live by them. And uh, I've just learned, learned it from my parents. So having that, that nature and having those, those, those proofs, those, those principles, you know, being taught at a young age, man, you know, I just felt that, like I had it in my heart. I, I, you know, I don't mean, I'm not trying to brag about myself, but like I was always like one of the most popular guys in school because it didn't matter what color you were, it didn't matter what you look like, like I will always speak to people, I would always respect people because I was always taught to treat people how I want to be treated. So it didn't matter, you're green, blue, purple, it don't matter, like I will come up to you and I will speak to you and talk to you in school. So I was like one of the popular ones in school. So I feel that being a fireman, I'm being able to save people's lives and help out. I feel I felt the statue for it, I can, you know, I can, I can carry a human being out of a, out of a burning house and, and save and help save lives and be a community worker, man, and be a good one. I can see you that. Know, determin determination, my will to learn and my ability to, to do whatever it takes to, to save lives, man, that's, that's part of me. Yeah, I guess, I mean, if my house was on fire, you wouldn't be the worst person to come there to help no, out. Not at all, not at all. You got water? Well, <laughs> I, I don't know if I would go in there <laughs> and save you. What? What just happened? Well, if I have the way, listen, man, don't get it twisted. <laughs> if I have the skills, if I was to develop the skills, of course I'll go in there and, and save you. But man, the firemen, that's what they do. I would have to, you know, I mean, okay, so you, you don't put my life, well. So with some training, you'd save me is well, what you mean. I got to know the whole story, man. <laughs> if, you know, it's, you just can't save my house is burning. It's, it's a small fire in my fireplace, Tim. Will you it's come like, in and save me? Where, where were you in the house? <laughs> How many people were in there? Like, I need to know this whole scenario. But can't you just say, yes, you'd save me if my house is burning? Listen, man, I, I've, I've had to. Whatever they're paying you to not just say yes, I'll double it if you'll just save me in the fire. I don't know, honestly, I have this fight all the time with my wife because we'd be driving down the street and there's someone parked on the side of the road and they need assistance and like I will literally stop. I will stop to like see what's on. Like there'll be a lady out, you know, maybe a flat tire. Like I want to go and like help, but I, I have to stop that. My wife was like, you have to stop that, you know, because. Does she say you're the heavyweight or the welterweight champion of the world? You can't just get out and change No, style? she just says that like you can't, she, cause my problem is she says you can't save the world. And I'm like, well, I'm not trying to save the world. I'm just trying to help out. Like this lady just looks in distress, it's hot outside. Like I want to see, can I help her? Can I, you know, get help quickly? Or does she need anything, you know? So, but you know, to, in today's day, you, you gotta be careful. You know, you have to be careful today. And she just keeps telling me that, like, hey, your family, you, you got to think about your family and kids. So, so I know that uh, we talked about 
three and a half years to the championship. It yeah. kind of sounds simple when you put it in a direct sentence no, like that. All right. So knowing that it's hard, talk about some of the struggles. I'm, I'm sure there were struggles on the way. What struggles did you have? How did you overcome those well, struggles? Well, before, I mean, everything, anything that's worth, worth having in this life, I mean, it's, it's, it all comes by sacrifice. Honestly, it does. You know, if you go back in the you know, biblical time when, you know, God, you know, brought Jesus down, he sacrificed his life for us, for all of us. So it, you gotta, it all starts with sacrifice. Um, and that was probably the hardest thing. Like, I didn't have a normal childhood. I didn't have a normal, like, uh, you know, uh, teenage, you know, go to the movies, hang out with my friends, go here, go there. Like, I didn't have that. Like, my focus was boxing. And, you know, I always prioritized my life, you know, steps. Like, I would, all right, first thing, I got to take care of myself in the morning. Then I, you know, go to school. You know, I get my road work in go to school, take care of my grades, go, you know, work out after school. And, you know, I always lived a very structured lifestyle. But it's safe to say that you had an end goal in mind first, right? Yeah. And so then you just sort of, you put the end goal in first and then did what it took to get to that end Absolutely. goal. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that, I think that, you know, as everybody, whether it's boxing or anything, I think, I think you have to have set goals and you have to live your life according to you what what you want to do you do, know? do you yeah. write them down of course you write them down on paper you, of course of and course. Where, where do you keep that piece of paper i got a book All right. <laughs> maybe they don't want to know no i could show no i could i mean i could show anybody i mean i i keep a log or a journal when i was training for my fights like i had like certain things that i write down goals um i write down my workouts and all that my what i eat how i felt that day because if if I felt really good one day, like that's what I want to eat the night of the fight. You know, when I when I do go out and fight, um, you know, and I keep track of my miles and how much I'm running, and I just see the progression. But it's better to write things down to me because it kind of keeps you focused on you know everything that you're doing. If you're writing it down, you get to go back and see it, and it's not only you keep a journal. So I mean, it could be anything. You you should keep a journal. You should write. You should write to yourself. You should you know. I mean, whatever it is that you're trying to do, you should definitely just keep some sort of a report on it, and uh, it will keep you focused. It definitely will keep you focused. Do you think writing those goals down and things like that, you think that helps separate and helps you achieve those individual? Absolutely. I think there's a lot of other factors, but I think writing them down and, is, and believing it is, is what you, know, you need to do. I think that's the first step to it, you okay. know, writing it down and knowing that it can't be accomplished. Anything and with time and like I said, the planning and then structuring your life. Like you can't say you want to be the baddest realtor on the on the planet when you're not doing what you need to do to be able to be the baddest realtor. You're not you're not sacrificing. You're not staying up late. You're not grinding as hard and going as hard as you need to go. Like you need to eat, sleep, and really in you know house selling houses if you want to be the best. Sure. That's it. Same thing with boxing. Like, if you want to be the best, you got to train. There's no, I, haven't, I haven't met a guy since, besides Floyd Mayweather that trained as hard as I train. I mean, it'd be 120 degrees outside, and I'm outside running, you know, because I want to put my body through hell because it's hell in the ring. So the more I stressed my body, I felt, it's okay. The more I stressed my body, I felt that, you know, the more I prepared myself to, for battle. And like I wasn't the most talented guy in the ring. I wasn't the most talented fighter. You know, uh, I fought guys that were a lot better than I was skill-wise. You know, um, but I wanted it more than them, and I always prepared myself. You know, for the worst, and I was always able to endure whatever they were dishing out. I was always able to endure it, and then just step on them. You know, to to win, to edge out a win or victory. But the only guy that I haven't been able to do that against, well, one time I did, but it's Manny Pacquiao. You know, his will was and his skill level were above mine. Um, even though I fell short, I still felt that like I, I, I won because I made it to the top of boxing, to the pinnacle. There's no higher place than where I went, you know, in, in the boxing sport. So if you could vote in the Philippines election, would you vote for Manny? Absolutely. I would. He's a good dude, man. I, I know a little bit about the relationship between the two of you. Do you mind sharing with everybody a little bit about that? Because I think there's some incredible qualities uh, that almost anybody can learn from when it comes to that. Well, Manny Pacquiao is, well, well our relationship is, is like, you know, we're, uh, we're cordial. And uh, it's more of a, yeah, hey, how you doing, buddy? Hey, Timothy, you know, I mean, we're, we're cool. But um, let, let me be more specific. 
when, when you and him first agreed to fight, you told me that he called you. Yeah. Can you well, share that story? Well, Manny Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao has a, has a big heart on him. He has a country that he helps support, and he's built, many don't know, he built over 3,000 homes for like the poor out there. He spends a lot of his earnings. It, that's the reason why he's still fighting today. And uh, before we had our first fight, he called me, and uh, he said, hey, thank you for accepting the fight. I said, no, thank you. Appreciate it. He's like, he said, I hope this money helps you and your family. And I said, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. You're a good man. Thank you for choosing me and wanting to fight me. And uh, because it was a $5 million paycheck, you know, I mean, I mean, coming from Palm Springs, the ghetto, and I mean, not having, not having much, man, you're going give to a, give a guy like me, a small guy like me, $5 million just to fight you? Come on, man. I'm, I'm all there. I mean, I felt that like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like I'll, I'll, thank you. I might, take, I might fight you for $5 I mean, million. I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, thank you so much, Manny. You know, he's so generous. But, you know, and then I had, three, I had two, uh, two more applications after that. You know, Manny Pacquiao, I owe to him. He's the reason why. I have money today is because Manny Pacquiao, you know, because is, of the fight. Is that, a com is that common or uncommon for a fighter to call and, and have a conversation like it's that? It's very uncommon. It's very uncommon for a fighter to call another fighter. But uh, Manny's just a, a, different, a different person. You know, he's not a normal fighter. Uh, he's a legend in the sport, and I admire him and everything he does for his country. And, uh, you know, he's a good guy. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. You, you have a lot of similar qualities as that. Yeah. You talk about him in a very elevated position but you're doing a lot of those same things right absolutely well it's 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 the element like you said it's the element it's the god has given me that i don't know that 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 ground to be able to that's the reason why i'm here today to be able to you know use it and give back and and help people i mean you know i was always taught that and raised that since i was raised it's better to give than receive you know, this goes, goes back to that, that time, man. And, you know, my parents dragged me to church every single day. Um, you know, but there were certain things that I remember them, them preaching me every, since I was a kid. But, um, you know, I just use these things, man. Um, I enjoy it. I enjoy giving back. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy helping people. Um, I feel that, you know, with my status, even my status, even if I wasn't at, you know, even if I wasn't at this status, I still get it get an enjoyment about helping people and helping others, man, because that, honestly, that's that's the way of living, man, honestly, so, when you can do that, these yeah, things for people. And that's great. The ability to help other people is obviously a, a, a wonderful trait. Let's talk about some mentors you had. Did you have any mentors Absolutely. on your way up? Absolutely. My father, my father was one, my mentor, honestly, uh, my father was, is, uh, he works for uh, Palm Streams Unified. He's a security guard, but my dad uh, was raised without his father. And so, you know, in most instances, uh, kind of like the, the trait, that trait or that element from my father not having a father. And sometimes it comes, it follows, it follows, you know, generation after generation. So, you know, my father could have been a, could have been a horrible father, but he chose otherwise to be a, a great father because he know how he felt when he didn't have his father in his life. So I would say my father, I would say, uh, you know, my my spiritual background, you know, I would say that has a lot to do with the way I am today. Um, I've met a lot of great people and, you know, a lot of people, I don't know, how many people think that, to me, that, uh, well, I want to know your opinion. How many people think that leaders are born or do you think leaders are made? Show of hands for show born. Of hands. Yeah, let's go do with you think first. leaders are born? Born? And a couple? Yeah, the, uh, I, th I hear a couple of boats out there. They're both. Both? I, I believe that they're both. I believe that leaders, I think that leaders definitely have certain qualities. And I think everybody in here is a leader. Honestly, if you're here today, I think you're a leader. Um, they have certain qualities, certain, certain characteristic, characteristic traits that, that leaders have. It's just like uh, you could say that some are born because, like, I can't play basketball. But somebody else can. I mean, that's something. That's a trait that they have. They can play basketball very, very well. Sure. I don't care how much I practice. I can't play basketball at that level. But that's a trait that they have. You get what I'm saying? Sure. Sure. So, but at the same time, I feel that like you know, some people have those leadership skills. They're born that way. They're driven. They're. I mean, they can. They can come and they can. They can talk to anyone and, and, and persuade anyone. They have those abilities or those traits to be able to do that. And 
Um, but I also think that it can be taught, and I think that I was more or less not born with it. I think I was taught because having good people in my life and being around different people, you know, has helped me groom. You, you learn, you know, the knowledge and uh, from other people and by reading and um, just living life in general. So I know you uh, were coaching some football here at McKinney yeah. High School for a little bit. I know that you're very active in a number of like youth programs, yeah. uh, the Boys and Girls Club, things yes. of that nature. Um, yes. What what are you trying to do? What, what is it that you're trying to uh, impart on the younger generation when you're uh, taking the time out of your day to coach high school football or to go to the Boys and Girls well, the Club? Main, the main thing is that there's a stigma, especially with celebrities and sports sports figures, that we don't we don't take a shower like everybody take a shower like some or something magical about us. But in all reality, I want the kids to understand and know that hey, I'm just like you. Just because I, I just fight very well. I, I just know how that's my gift. I know how to fight, but hey, I could still go out here and pick up trash, you know, in the stadium. I could still go out here and coach and be with you guys, you know, and be normal. And I want the kids to know that and understand that, that hey, just because you see that guy on TV doesn't make, you know, he, he's special in his way, but it doesn't bring him to God level, you know, it doesn't bring him like, wow, he's, you know, he's everything, you know what I mean? It's more like, hey, he does this very well, but yeah, he's a normal guy just like us. And I tell guys all the time, like, hey, I'm just like you. I just fight. I just fight well. What do they react like when you say I'm just like you? They don't know. No, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, no. What are you doing out here? It's like, I, I, you know, we, we have the restaurant House of Pokey, and it's like, I'm in the back and I'm working, and people's like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, you go from boxing and making Poke Bowls? I'm like, yeah, what's wrong with that? <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong with that, man? And they're just like, Wait, what happened? Are you fighting anymore? I'm like, I'm like, man, like, no. I was like, my wife and I, we own this spot, man. But, you know, I, I'll get my hands dirty. I'll clean tables. I'll do whatever I need to do. The hard work never ends, man. And um, I don't stop. I, there's a common thing that I always tell my kids all the time. I always say, don't tread water. Don't. Don't tread water. I say, you know why? That's the first step to dying, to me. That's what I believe. It's like... You know, you get comfortable in your life and, and, and everything's going so smooth and, you know, you, you know, you have your 401k, and you have this and, you know, you might have one house or this, you know, and a lot of people, they just get stuck in that, that zone and they don't want to grow. They don't want to go to another level. Like, I'm different. I'm a, I, I'm a risk taker. Boxing, it, you take a risk. You have to take risks. And, you know, the more uncomfortable I am, the better it is for me. I like to be uncomfortable. I like to feel uncomfortable um, in, in everything that I do. Like opening this restaurant was very uncomfortable for me because guess what? I'm not using investment money. I'm using the money that I've made. Sure. You know, I'm taking a risk, but I know how much work or how much how hard I'm going to work, you know, to make this restaurant successful and my wife included. And, and, and I'm willing to take that risk because, you know, I don't know what the, what's going to be the end result. But I know if I'm a part of it and if I'm working hard, I know that, hey, it's going to be successful. It got to be because it, there's no way in doubt in my sure. mind that it cannot be. Well, we got you and me up here have about 10 more minutes before we start to open it up to questions um, from all these crazy Lovely potential, people. crazy potential Lovely. enemies of the state. No. Um, so I, 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 I hear you talking about the House of Pokey. Yeah. Right. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Tim and his wife have opened up a restaurant, Rancho Mirage House of Pokey. And uh, I know that Sean already disclosed our word, which is boxerpreneur that we've come up with for you, <laughs> right? A boxerpreneur. If yeah. you go to the uh, Tim Bradley website, you sell clothes. Well, I do. I do sell clothes. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not done. Hold on okay. a second. Because there's a lot more that you got going on, I've learned. You, you commentate on boxing yeah. events, like color yeah. commentary. You, you promote boxing events as well. I will be. I, you, that's the next. That's the next. And then, thing. and you sell Poke Bowls. We sell Poke Bowls. So, so, how, so how does the five-time champion boxer shift from boxer to entrepreneur. How, how did you become boxerpreneur? Well, it's, um, so like I said, like you most, I, I just like to learn, honestly. I just like to learn and just be better. Um, I have a certain way that I live. I try to elevate myself every single year. Um, as a man, as a husband, I try to be better every single year. Every day I try to be better. And so it's like, um, like I said, don't tread, I don't tread water, man. I'm always looking for land. I'm always looking to find ground somewhere and do something different and just keep 
elevate. You know, I, I want to take what we have now, the nest egg we have now, and then I want to build it even bigger. You know, every year, even if it's by fifty thousand, even if it's by a thousand dollars, I want to keep growing, man. You know, I want to keep going. If I, if you got a house and if it's not paid off yet, let's try to pay that house off. You know, that's the way I think. It's like, hey, if I have my house house paid off, it's like, hey, that's three, that's two thousand dollars in my pocket. I can go and invest that money in something else. So that's the way I think. You know, and uh, we have real estate too that we do, and we don't have no real estate company that. You know, any company that actually take care of our homes, we actually take care of myself. Um, and I like real estate. And plus, another thing is, is I do my own um, investing. So I've learned, my accountant had taught me, taught me five years ago how to invest money in the market. So I do my own investing too. And I do have a bank that I invest with as well, but I do have, I call it play money where I go and I, and I make some trades and I have some fun with it and I have some long-term you know, uh, trading options, but I also have some short ones and I call that play money. Okay. And uh, I, may, I, did, I, I did good this, this, this quarter, man. I did real good. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> I did really well this quarter and, and, and that's should, why Should I we want. talk some specifics here? You have any tips, any stock tips for the crowd? Any? Man, no, well. I think How do you they feel about probably, Facebook or they, Amazon? They, well, I mean, I wish I would have bought Facebook a lot earlier, but um, said I agree with that statement. Just for the yeah, record, yeah, I, I could have bought it earlier and I didn't. And then when I did buy it, I sold and I made a little profit. But all money is good money to me in the market, you know. So, but but I do that too. But I'm always willing to learn. Um, if you guys, oh, if you don't know, no one knows it all, and I know I don't know it all. But at the same time, if if you're looking to learn. And in and, and the grow, you know, you, you got to be optimistic, man. You got to be optimistic and you have to be willing to 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 take things that, you know, that, you know, that can help you, man. Sure. Honestly, you have to be. I think you got some, you lit up some faces when you said, I like real estate and I like a vest. Like certain faces really got excited I love about that. that. Just so yeah. you know. No, it, so I'm sure there's some people in here no, that are happy to help you out with any of those. Well, uh, check this out. I got a real estate guy. I do. I mean, <laughs> if, if I get tired of them, I have to look somebody else. But, <laughs> I got a way, I just got a way of, my way of thinking is a little different. Um, I, so like when I buy real estate, I don't finance. I like to buy my houses cash. And I know I can hire, I could probably have probably 40 homes, 40 homes that I have mortgages out on, but I don't feel comfortable having that. You know, I don't like debt. I hate debt. And I don't know, it can be a bad thing, but like, I like to own everything, um, and I don't like to have to pay anybody back. So my, the way I do my real estate is a little different. I buy my houses cash, and to me it's like just gravy. So I get a renter, it's just uh, gravy. I don't even need the money, so I'll just take it, I'll throw it in the account and let it build up. Build up a few years, guess what? I'll buy another house, I'll buy another house. But the reason behind the way I do it is, before you go, because the bank ain't giving me no money. I hope there's no bankers in here. <laughs> but the bank's not, just keep going. Just but keep the, going. Bank, the bank's not giving me any money for my money sitting in there. So you know, why should I let it sit in there when I could just buy something cash that makes sense? And it's like I look at houses as savings accounts. So I'm like, ah, 300k. All right, that's a savings so, account right but, there. But do you think the 20? <laughs> do you think the 20? Let's go like going back to you think the 10 year ago Tim Bradley no. would have been like, I'm gonna be a real estate. I'm gonna no. buy it cash. <laughs> No, 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 because I, 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 I learn, I, like I said, I learn a lot from reading. I learn a lot from just watching and how people do things, and I try to not make those same mistakes. So, like, I don't want to be another statistic, so I, I try to make smart investments. I've made some dumb investments. I really have and lost, lost some money. But I also learned a lot along the way as far as, uh, you know, willing to learn how to play the market, you know, real estate. You know, um, when with people that have money, they don't look at, you know, uh, problems as issues. They look at them as like more opportunity to learn and to grow and to get better. And that's the way I look at it. It's like, hey, OK, this happened. Well, you know what? I know not to do that next time. So let's do this this time. So OK, so let's go the other way. Go ahead. Ten years ago, you're doing very different things. I mean, we weren't serving anybody pokey ten years ago. No. So ten years from now, what are we going to be doing, Tim? Ten years from now? Um, I don't know. You know what? Honestly, I, this is the vision. 
I'm gonna tell you what my the goals is. My wife and I have. I said, I said, hey, we're gonna build a brand. It takes about ten years from my experience to build a household name, a brand. Because I'm using bo- I use boxing as like my experience. Okay. So it took me ten years to to be you know to make serious money in the boxing game. It took me ten years. So I look at it as. And I've read that it takes about 10 and a half years to become a professional at something. It doesn't matter what it is, it takes 10 and a half years to become a professional. A little bit over a decade, so one decade. So it's, um, so I look at that, I say, we're gonna own, we're gonna own three or four house of pokies ourselves. Then once we get that cookie cutter and we can show people how much money they're actually gonna be making and being able to generate, then what we're going to do is we're going to franchise. We're going to franchise to people. You know, we're going to look for you know franchisees. If anybody want to buy a franchise, we've had like ten people already come up to us. We're like we're not ready yet, no. But once we figure that out, we're going to start franchising. So in the next ten years, you could possibly see maybe 10, 15 house of pokies. You probably see that, and we're going to try to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then one day, within these ten years. We're gonna get tired of doing this whole house of pokey thing and we're gonna sell it, sell a franchise off to maybe, I don't know, by the time maybe another pokey spot that, you know, is looking to buy up all the rest of the pokey spots, I don't know, and wants to give us, you know, fifty million dollars, sixty million, I don't know. Yes. You know how much it's worth? <laughs> Sold. And then we're gonna then we're gonna sell it off. But that is the vision. But this that's how we think. Like most people think about one one or maybe two. We think Bigger. We always think bigger. This promotional thing, I had one of my guys, I'll give you an example, a guy that I'm working with. He's like, oh yeah, we can uh, start promoting fights. We can do this, we can do that. And then we can do like another guy, this other guy that's up in Fresno. He puts on big fights. He has a fighter that he has signed, but the guy is signed by top rank. But anyways, he puts on fights for top rank and he gets a little percentage of the money. And I'm like, wait, huh? what? When, I'm not going to be like him. I said, if we're gonna do boxing, we're gonna go all the way. We're gonna be like, we're gonna be like De La Hoya. We're gonna be like Bob Arum. Like, we're not gonna have, I don't have, I don't wanna have do anything. If we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it right. You know, and that's how we do it. We go big or we go home. We go big or we go home. That's it. And that's the way I live, man. I, I don't live comfortable. I like to live a little bit uncomfortable. You feel me? Yeah, I do. Yeah, that's I do. awesome. I do. Yeah, a little bit I, uncomfortable. I, I'm supposed to turn the microphone over to them to ask questions, but. I want to ask the first one. So that my wife's sitting right there in the second row, right there to put her on the spot. Okay. Hey. And uh, I, I, and you know, they're not listening. It's just you and me talking, Tim. Yeah. Don't worry. These, these are fake microphones and everything. Yeah. Um, she met me before I was whatever I am now, a lawyer. Yeah. Mr. Big Shot. Yeah. The big dog. Okay. Sharp teeth. <laughs> Hey, I'm glad you feel that way. And uh, <laughs> I'm glad you feel that way, baby. You know. And occasionally, she will say to me, "Well, you gotta understand, I don't see you as a lawyer. I still see you as like that guy I met way back when." Yeah. And you, right now, when you were describing how I spoke, I heard a lot of the wees. I also know the story, the we, the we, the we. Right? I know there's a, a Mrs. involved mm-hmm. here. Much like I occasionally have to turn to my wife and say, don't worry, I'm a lawyer. Do you ever turn to her and say, I was the five-time champion of the world? Give her some of that shadow box? She don't care. <laughs> she doesn't care either, Tim. She doesn't care either. She don't care, man. Thank you so much uh, uh, for your time. I, I wanted to see if anybody had any questions man, uh, for Tim, not of me. I got a quick story real quick before Please. you head out, man. I really do. And, and I don't know if there, there's a few couples in here. Just don't get me in trouble with her. But, but one of the things that a lot of people don't know is that when I fought for the world championship, two things happened, okay? It was close to 2000, 2008, and that was when the market tumbled down, housing market, the whole nine, you know, you know the uh, house payments went up like crazy. Um, and so did ours. And one of, one of my important fights fell through. I didn't get paid. And I wasn't working. My wife was working at the school district. And we come home from a late dinner, and we haven't been paying our mortgage because, you know, in order for them to even talk to you about refinancing, you had to show delinquency. You couldn't, you couldn't pay anything. So 
we didn't pay anything. We saved a little bit of that money. Um, but I also was training for a fight, so I was training for a title eliminator, so I had to spend that money to get sparring partners. You know, I had to pay for sparring partners. So we are using that money. Anyways, came home with the kids from dinner, and we had a 30-day eviction notice on our house. And that was a big moment for us. I mean, that, that moment was tough because we had two kids, we had nowhere to go, uh, we had no idea what the heck we were going to do. And I mean, that night I remember me and my wife crying together, crying together, man, you know, um, on that pillow that night, man. Um, it was a very stressful time. It was very uncomfortable. But I, I have to share with you because I know people go through a lot of, a lot of things and you got to go through some things in, in order to make you stronger, man. God puts you through things to make you stronger, honestly. Sure. And so um, that happened. And then the fight fell through. I didn't get a paycheck at all. And I was gonna actually start doing personal training, doing whatever to make, you know, make ends meet. And my wife told me no. She said, no, we're gonna get through this. I'll find a solution. And my wife did. She did. She held it down. She found a guy that, can, that helped us refinance our house. And so we didn't get evicted. But then at the same time, now the championship fight came about, okay? And we're still, you know, I mean, we're not eating out at all. We had two car payments. Um, we had, you know, a mortgage payment, you know, around 1,000 or 1,200 bucks. And we had a couple other expensive things that we had to take care of as well. Mm -hmm. And it was hard. I mean, we were late on a lot of things and it was tough, and, uh, but my wife stood by me. And that's how I knew at that time she was the one because I wasn't anything, man. And she stood by me all the way through that, man. And we stood by each other. And, I, and we go back and my wife and I, we talk about this all the time. I say, you know what? Even though we were, we were at that rock bottom, I think that we loved each other a lot more, a lot more than, than we do right now. You know, than we do right now. Like, how is that so? Like we got everything you ever wanted now, but we were happier then when we were going through what we were going through. We we're closer then, I should say. So, fast forward, championship fight comes. I'm waiting for my wife. It's the day of the fight. It's four o'clock in the morning. I'm supposed to fight that night. Ten o'clock. It's four in the morning. I'm up. My wife takes a flight to England to watch me fight. It was just her. She got lost in Nottingham and she was driving around for three hours with a cab driver. And the cab driver didn't want to drop her off because the neighborhood was tough and rough and it was dangerous. And he said he couldn't live with himself dropping her off. So they found the hotel. I found my wife, I was downtown, down, down, downstairs in the lobby and she came up to me and she was like, oh, I was like, what happened? She told me the story, but anyways, she says to me, she says, babe, she said, I spent our last $350 to get here. She says, we have $11 in our bank account. You have to win. <laughs> I said, no, no pressure or nothing, huh? Woo-wee. I don't know what was worse, uh, taking those coins when I was uh, getting married or at that moment at the time. <laughs> you know, when you get married, you got to take those coins and uh, you promise to provide. And I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> OK, yeah, sure. It gets, very, it gets real suddenly. So, right? yeah. So I was like, there's no way in hell this guy's going to beat me. You know, there's no way he's going to beat me. I don't care where I'm at, man. And everything was going bad that week. Everything from the plane ride over, coming to customs, the guy, what are you here for? I'm here to, to, to fight, a championship fight. Who are you fighting? Uh, GM Winter. Winter, the hitter? I was, he's like, you think you stand a chance? I'm like, what? I look at this guy, I'm like, I look at this guy, I'm like, I can't believe this guy is saying this to me right now. And I said, and I told the guy, I said, I said, I said you, 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 you remember what you said. You remember what you just said right now? I said, because when I come back, I'm going to throw the belt in your face. And he was just like, oh, OK, OK. I'm like, oh, yeah. You know, English guy, right? So that happens. I get to the hotel. Then I'm like, my, my, my room's not ready. So they say, oh, we have, a, we have a computer room over there. You can go lay on the floor over there. So I had to lay on the floor for four hours to wait for my, my hotel room. 
And then after that, I get in my hotel room and my AC doesn't work. They gave me a room with no AC. So it's hot in there. And they're like, oh, well, we're, we're, we're fully occupied. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm like, you know what? All right, God, this is, this is what you want from me? No doubt. No problem, I'm gonna stay in this room. I stayed in the room. Then they try to trick me on the scale. Everything went wrong. They try to trick me on the scale, the whole thing. We caught it, thank God. But when I went into that fight, man, there was not a doubt in my bone, in my body, that I wasn't gonna win that fight. I felt that I did everything that I needed to do to get there, to be ready for this moment. And I felt that, I felt that God wasn't gonna leave me hanging, that he was gonna be there with me, and that he was gonna see me through. And he did, man, he delivered. And it was the best experience of my life, man. And still today, I mean, you have to go through some things in order to, to get better in order to better yourself, in order to better people around you, you have to go through things, uh, you know, to be trials and tribulations. You gotta go through them, man. You gotta stay strong. That's the moral of the story. You gotta stay strong, man. Stay strong, you know, and battle all the way to the end. And that's what I've done. Great. Well, you, does, but, does anybody have a question out there? Yeah, yeah. No? No questions. All right, here's this. Here's, that's oh, easy. Good, hey. Oh no, no, I hope y'all I hope y'all learned something. And I, I love your transparency and your absolute sense of humanity. Thank you. You're, you're very open and you're a great soul, so thank, thank you, you so much. One of the things that's really unique about the Coachella Valley is we have so many five oh one two threes and we're at the beginning season of everybody going, Hey, do you have a couple of dollars in your pocket? So from your perspective, from your lens, what is it that our leadership Coachella Valley group can do as a contribution that may not be check writing? but it's showing up, because you have a habit of showing up in mm -hmm. your community. Is there, some, is there a blind spot for us, or is there an opportunity that we might have missed that you're aware of, that maybe one of us or all of us can come together and fill a bucket here in the community that's not being paid attention to? Oh, man. There's, I mean, has anybody been out to the rescue mission out in Coachella? Uh, so everybody's been there. Yeah, this class. Right? I like, yeah, yeah. I like, I like that. I like that rescue mission. But uh, you know, the, the the main thing that drives me crazy is is uh, that's something that I actually wanted to do. Somebody beat me to it. That's something that I actually wanted to do, and I told my wife about it because the biggest thing for me is is um, uh, I I can't stand seeing homeless homeless people around. I just can't. It's hard for me, and uh, I want to help them, and I know sometimes some of these people, they can't be helped because they're mentally messed up. Majority of them are mentally messed up, and they'd rather live in their world, in that world. But um, I think that's something that we can get together, you know, to do. I mean, you know, um, trying to bring them in, bring them into the shelter, showing them. I think a lot of these people, I think they, they're smart. I, they, they are super smart, man, believe it or not. Like, the street savvy, I should say. They're very street savvy. But I, that can be one area. Uh, another area is I always like to attack the youth. I think if you get the youth thinking right out the gate, I think that they can be, you know, very productive and be, uh, you know, very good human beings, uh, decent human beings, you know, when they rise up. So I always go and try to just look to help the youth. If it's rather, you know, going to the school and volunteering. How many of you volunteering your, your kids' classes? There you go. See, I see all women, but one men. Where the men at? Come on now. The men. We need. We need to have more men volunteering your kids' classes and just going down there and read. You. I'm telling you, you would be. You would see a change in your kids. You know, demeanor if you go down and hey, you show them that you really care. You really do. Well, we know mom cares, but wait, what about where pops at? You know, go down to your kids' class, volunteer if you have some time off. They will appreciate that. They love that. They love to see pops. They love, I mean, they love mom, but see pops, they're like, they might do a double take, you walk in the class, they're like, wait, what's wrong? What happened, dad? <laughs> you know? Hey, I'm just here to help. I'm here to help you help out, you know, in the classroom. Um, but attacking the youth, I, I get involved, uh, we get involved, I say we, my wife and I, because we do everything mostly together. Everything we do, we do it together, um, as we should. But um, attacking the youth as well, getting involved in programs, youth programs, I mean, everybody here has a story that they can tell on their success. I mean, volunteering and doing and speaking in classrooms and stuff like that. I mean, you can call the school up and, you know, they have avid programs and different things. I mean, I mean, your voice can be heard too. 
and and just try to like I told you, make yourself uncomfortable. Think outside the box. Come on, make yourself uncomfortable. Okay, all right. Send send a little bit more on that mortgage payment. You know, uh, you know, it's, it's two thousand dollars sitting about you know twenty two hundred. So you know, you bring that mortgage down a little bit more. You know, every year. You know, it adds up. So, but um, th things like that. I mean, and um, volunteering, just volunteering, volunteering your time. You just gotta look for opportunities. Hey, Honestly. And as a quick plug, I know, uh, Sean, uh, there's a number of speaking opportunities here at La Quinta High School, including the Public Service Academy. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if that's something you want to take Tim up on, you can be sure to do that. So you set a great example for a lot of people, even the youth. What do your children think of you and where you've come from and where you're at now today? And are you, you know, I'm sure you're teaching them where you were and how you got there. My children don't even know where I'm from. <laughs> I, honestly, they really don't. Um, I've I've tried to show them, but they just they don't. At this age, my older my older kids they do. They're 17 and 13. They they understand. But my younger ones are still kind of six years old. My daughter, she's um, I don't know. She's a she's an old soul. Uh, my six year old, and then my three year old, my four year old daughter, and then I have a two year old son. So they're a little bit on a they don't, their attention span is not there yet. But my six year old, I told her, you know, I kind of talked to her about where I'm from. And, uh, you know, we, I still, I still the same principles I, I've learned over the years uh, by my fathers, by peers, by my peers, by people that I work with, um, you know, because you can learn from anybody, honestly. Um, but uh, one of the things that um, I, I always try to live by example. You know, I always, I think action speaks a lot of words. I think a lot of people talk a whole lot, but what are you doing? And, you know, sometimes I find myself doing it. Like, I'll talk a whole lot, but it's like, dang, what are you doing, Tim? Like, how are you going to try to tell somebody about eating right when you ain't eating right yourself? <laughs> so so I try to, like, not, not talk about things uh, that I do. So, um, for instance, like, my, my kids, uh, they, um, like, if they see someone drinking or whatever and they say oh dad that's bad I'm like, yeah it is it is but you know you can drink responsibly when you have that time when you're older so I try not to lie to them too and say oh I don't, I've never drank before I'm not like a heavy drink but I've, I have I've had a glass of wine you know I'm not gonna lie you know but I'm not gonna like hide that from my kids and I try not to hide too much from my kids but you know I know that if it's gonna hurt them if it's gonna affect them of course I'll hide it from them. I can't I can't share with that they're not at that age yet but but um they know, my kids know how to work and how to work hard. And that's something that we always instill in them, you know, from day one. They know how to work. Like if I need them to go to the restaurant, they're, they're more than willing. They want to go, they want to help out, they want to clean tables, they want to, you know, they want to do whatever they need to do uh, to help out and contribute, you know. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's just... Um, my kids, they live a different life lifestyle than where I, where I came at. You know, it, you know, they they went to private school, and then my wife and I we switched them from private school to public school due to the fact that we wanted them to have a a bigger spectrum on just life in general and people. And I think that I think that life, honestly, in a person is about their character. I honestly do I think it's about character. You know, and I want my kids to be able to be able to be in an environment and be comfortable. It don't matter what environment it is. I want them to be comfortable. In their skin, you know, I can. My 17-year-old, I can tell you, he don't care what anybody said about him. It took me years to, it took me years to get to that level to where my son is at already. But I was able to instill that in him early on, to where, son, you can't care about what people think about you. You know who you are. You know what type of man you are. You know your heart. You know, if they people can't see that, you don't need them in your life. You know, you know, I taught my son that, you know, early real early, but it took me years to get to that level to where, you know, you got to have thick skin, you know, people are going to say things about you and, uh, you know, you got to be, you just got to just ignore them, you know, ignore them. Like, you know who you are. We all know who we are, right? Does it hurt you guys that people say anything about you? I'm pretty sure it hurts some people in here, you know, if someone says something bad about you, you're like, oh, I can't believe they said that about me. I just laugh at them because I know who I am. I laugh at them, but it took me years to get to that level. You know, and being and being comfortable with my skin and knowing who I am as a as a person and knowing my heart. It took me years to get there. But when I, I'm there now, I'm living, baby. I mean nothing bothers me. 
You know, Tim, you suck. I heard it all. You suck. You're the worst fighter ever. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love you. And they, then they look at me like, this dude is crazy. Yeah, I am crazy. <laughs> I know who I am. All right. I think uh, I'm sure there's other questions, um, but unfortunately, due to time, we wanna, we're going to have to wrap it up. Oh, but, man. Come on. We can talk all day. I want to okay, talk. I, I, I can talk all day. They come all on, know that about me. another question. All right. Let's go. One more question. I can't. I mean, what am I going to do? Fight him? Uh, I know. We'll, go, we'll go to you after, Kate. Go ahead, Sean. No. <laughs> what about the fight against hunger every day at the House of Pokey? No, you know, <laughs> no. I told you, man, I, 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 try, I try not to make the same mistakes. I, man, I try not to. I look at everybody, oh, he's retired, he comes back and fights. And I go, oh, okay. And then, you know, he retires, he comes back and he plays. You know, it's just like I, I, when I made that decision, I said, this is it. And that's one of the things that, I feel that I'm a little different at is that I'm willing to make that hard choice and just live with it. You know, my dad, my, my dad, I hear going back to my parents again. My dad always said, hey, a man got to make a choice. And once he makes that choice, he sticks by it no matter what. You know, he don't, he don't flip flop. He don't. So when I decided to make that choice to retire, I'm done. I'm never going back to fight ever. Even with Mayweather McGregor money come? No, nah, I won't okay. go back. So money, money there. don't move me, man. I hear you. I'm good. Well, I take that back. Money does move me, <laughs> but to a point where, where my integrity and, and you know my word, it, I, it's not worth it. To sure. me, it's not. Okay. Uh, would you support any of your kids if they decided to be a, a fighter? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, my kids know that there's no fighting in my house. <laughs> I say, I tell them, I say, hey, listen, daddy, daddy, daddy did this for a long time and daddy did this for you. So no, I'm, you're not going to fight, but my son seems like he's heading in that direction. He's two and <laughs> I know, I know. How, how, how do you determine a two year old instead of, I mean, I'm just curious. Uh, how do you, how have you determined the two year old is on the path to the. It's all the, it's the temperament. It's just, it's just the way he is. It's his he's in a diaper it's like. His, no, he's just, he's just a, he's aggressive. You know, he's aggressive. Uh, he's seen it. You know, he's seen me do it, and he just wants to do what daddy wants to, what daddy does. So, um, I try not to do. I try not to practice in front of him and stuff like that. But he seems like he's going that direction. He's always want to fight, 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 daddy, fight, fight. But, and he wants to wrestle. That's it. I just wrestling. want to say, I, I wouldn't fight the kid. <laughs> Nair? Thank you. Uh, uh, I compliment you on making the decision that you've made to stop fighting Thank you. time in your life. And, and you've got so much to live for. I hope you stick by that. I will. Earlier, you complimented your opponent, uh, Manny Pacquiao, yes. for what he does for his country and how involved he is in his country. Do you see a place for yourself in the future? as perhaps a, a, an elected leader? Mm. Politics is not my thing. B Bradley Afsar, 2020? Po politics, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, politics is really, nah, I, politics are tough. I, I'm not a fan of, of the whole politics. I mean, I, too no much po fighting? Any politicians here are great. <laughs> no, because it's, it's hard to, it's hard to be in the middle. It's hard to be in the middle. It's hard to be on the fence. I mean, you know, you got to have certain beliefs and it's just, it's just tough. It's, it's difficult because you can't please everybody. You know, that's one thing in the sport of boxing. You learn that right away. You cannot please everybody and you just have to just be comfortable with yourself. And so I don't want to be involved in politics, not at this moment, but maybe in the future. I don't know, but that's not on my, that's not on my agenda right now on my plate. Absolutely not. That's tough. Oh, yeah, yeah. Politi you you want to be a politician? Not really, but Bradley Afsar sounds. I mean, ah, Afsar man. Bradley, like that better? I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to pee off, piss off a lot of people, because that's what we're. I already do that though. That's cool, and you're comfortable with that though, huh? <laughs> we'll probably be a lot gentler than what's going on right now, though, right? Yeah, well, yeah. See, that's another topic. See, I don't even really see. There's a couple topics you don't talk about. So maybe we just wrap it up here then. Yeah, let's not talk about right. let's not talk about that. Well, Tim, you, Tim knows. 
all, all the times I've had an opportunity to speak with Tim, they've been outstanding and great conversations. I hope everybody enjoyed this one. When we, oh. planned, when we planned for this though, when we sat down and talked about um, what we were gonna be doing today, uh, when I went home, I came across uh, a leadership quote, and I, I know we didn't have time today to talk about the, rock, the watch story. If, if you don't know, um, can you, do you, mind? do you mind? Oh, my watch? Yeah. Actually, why don't you do it? Tell, real quick, the quick version, Reader's Digest. Tell the story about the oh. gold Rolex, like the, gold, the one oh. you told me. Yeah, well, see, I told you, we, we always learn things along the way. And uh, I used to wait tables. That's what I used to do. I, I waited tables at Coco's but, and then Mimi's Cafe. And I used to have an opportunity to talk to a lot of just millionaires, billionaires, you name it. I mean, I've talked to so many different types of people. And uh, it was a gentleman there, and he was a millionaire, a lot of money, um, came in regular jeans, you know, regular shirt, just, you can even tell he's a millionaire, honestly. But uh, he had a gold Rolex on. And I was like, hey, sir, because I always pay attention to weird things. I know, I would see shoes, I'm like, wow, those shoes are nice. It can be girl shoes, it don't matter, I'm just weird like that. I know, people always say, dude, you like that bag? I'm like, it's hot, dude. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call it what you want to call it, but it's all right. Um, but, um, he told me, he said, uh, I was like, man, that's nice. And he was like, you know what? He's like, if you ever made, if you ever made some of yourself, you know, uh, cause I would always talk to him all the time. And I told him, I want to be a fighter. I want to, you know, win the championship and I want to, you know, make lots of money. And he said, if you ever get an opportunity, he said, if you're going to buy a watch, you buy a Rolex. And I was just like, okay, all right, Rolex. And he was like, yeah. Rolex, they're the best. And I was like, okay. And he's like, and make sure if you want to let make a statement, you make sure it's all gold. And I said, okay, <laughs> all gold Rolex. And I still remember that. And so when I had my opportunity to buy a watch, I went to go get the Rolex at Leeds and Sun Jewelry Store. Shout out, Leeds and Sun. Over there. <laughs> They're in the house right they now. Sold, right there. Yeah, they sold, yeah, they sold, yeah, they sold me, Brett, her husband sold me this, this watch. Um, anyways, and I picked the baddest Rolex, gold, all gold Rolex, because of that gentleman. Now, if I didn't run into that gentleman, I would have had no clue, but, but when people see this watch, it is a statement. To me, it is. Oh, it is. You know, it's a statement. For, it's like, so the reason I wanted to bring this up was, so that story stuck with me when we had our little conversation. I mean, let's just show the wrist real quick over here. <laughs> This is called the all hair wrist. Um, and so uh, that night though, I, 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 I was thinking of questions to ask you and how we can make this useful for the leadership program. And I came across this quote, Warren Bennis, a pioneer in leadership studies, defined leadership as the following. The, pass the capacity to translate vision into reality. Into reality. And without question, Tim, That's one true. of the reasons I think myself and the people involved with this want to have you as our first Thank you. speaker for this is because without question, you've trans you have taken your vision and translated it into reality. And I commend you for that, really. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I got thank you. Um, one more thing that I like to say is, is that, um, and this is something that I always say to people all the time my friends and all, and I know we have children, and sometimes I think that living and growing up in the desert, we, we tend to think a little bit closed-minded. We're surrounded by mountains, and we think that this is all that life has to offer, and our kids grow up in, these, in the desert. I feel that it kind of suppresses their mind a bit, and I think as parents, or as people, I think that it's very important for us to try to get these kids outside of these mountains. Um, I run into athletes all the time. My son is the best in the valley, the best in this, the best, and I, I applaud him. I say, great job. But then I start asking them questions. I say, how is he compared to his peers in the state? How is he compared to his peers in regional? How is he compared to his peers nationally? I don't know. Okay. Being best in this Coachella Valley is great. It's wonderful. But for some reason, our football team or any football team, I mean, but you use football as an example, they can leave outside of here. It's hard to it's hard to win. So my thing is is that I think that we need to make sure that we get our kids, take them to different places, 
show them that, hey, this valley is beautiful. It is. But this isn't the only thing that's for you here. I mean, there's bigger, better things outside of this as well, bigger things. And I think for me, boxing and having that opportunity growing up where I grew up at, because I see a lot of those guys that were babies, same age as me, still there on the corner, hanging out. Their kids are on the corner hanging out. They never got those opportunities to see other things to brighten, to have their mind grow and see past where they are at that present moment. And they feel that that is what life is about, and it really isn't. And boxing changed my life to be able to see bigger and better things out and about. I mean, I travel, I've been start traveling since I was 12 years old. And I saw, you know, the glitz and the glams. I went over to overseas and fought at black tie events and saw all kinds of different things. You know, just things that I wanted, things that I, that I was like, man, why can't I have that car? Or why can't I have that couch? Or why can't I live like this person? And these are the things that motivated me and kept me fighting and knowing that, hey, it's not just where I grew up at. Hey, I, I, can, I can be at the, la the level of this, this person over here driving that, that Mercedes or that Benz or that Rolls Royce or that this. I can be at that same level if I just have that opportunity, if I work for it and I you know, dedicate my, my life to it and go after it and go after my dreams and you know, what I believe in. So if you guys have kids, and I know you guys do, because everybody in here look important. If they have kids or you know anybody else in there, <laughs> you guys look very important. Try to get them outside of these, these mountains and try to show them you know, other things other than just what we have here. And I know you guys have, but uh, that's one of the things I always tell people all the time. Get your kids out of the valley. Take him to see different things. Take, he's going to hurt me if up. you don't do that. Please but take your children. But that's, but that's what I did, baby. But anyways, that's the, reason why, that's the reason why I'm here today. Honestly, it is. Thank you Thank so much. God. Tim, Desert Storm. Worthy! Oh, ring announcer. I've always hey, wanted to do that. You know what? I got a place for you, Please, man. please do. Ring announcer. It is time. I mean, I'm, I'm ready. I'm so ready. You are ready. I'm ready. You You're ready. That? Matt. He wants me to announce. Don't make fun of me. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you at the I hope, next I hope leadership, I hope anybody. leadership luncheon.